Well, good morning and a very, very warm welcome uh, to our webinar this morning. My name is Eden Brown. I'm delighted to be here today as host. And I welcome you to our webinar on behalf of Northern Ireland's six further and higher education colleges, the Department for the Economy and the Hospitality and Tourism Skills Hat Network to the HATS Network to the first of our four webinars in the Hospitality and Tourism Management Skills Spotlight Series. Now, you'll notice uh, in the right hand side of the screen that we have comments and questions so the panel have very kindly agreed to address any questions which you may have at the end of their particular presentation and I'm delighted to say also that uh, the organizers have organized polls so that you'll be able to comment on specific questions comments which are specific to your part of the industry this important industry uh, as the session moves forward so we want to make this as interactive as possible. So I'm just going to take uh, a moment or two to guide you through the, the shape of today's event. It is recorded and will be uploaded a little bit later on today. And we're delighted that all of our panelists have taken time from their schedules to be with us. So my name is Aidan Bryan. I'm a senior lecturer at Belfast Metropolitan College, and I'm delighted to be here today as the host of today's webinar. I'm delighted to be joined on today by my colleague, Rachel Burns. And Rachel is the Economic Development Manager at Belfast Metropolitan College as well. Uh, one of our presenters today is Roshi McKee, who's Project Director of Hospitality and Tourism Skills, the HATS Network. And we're also joined today, and we'll be looking forward to hearing the presentation of Anya Kearney, who's the Director of Business Support and Events for Tourism Northern Ireland. Absolutely essential uh, to help us recover from the current situation. In terms of background, the Management Skills Spotlight Series has been created to provide you leaders in the hospitality and tourism sector with bite-sized learning opportunities directly relevant to your industry, your role, and in the work you undertake every day that impacts you as a manager, a coach, a mentor, and a leader. Now, this series is going to enable everyone on the call to help build skills, gain knowledge, and share experiences with other professional managers in hospitality and tourism, drawing on the skills and expertise of our guest speakers, industry representatives, as well as college lecturing staff. So today, we shine the light on skill support, whereby our panel of representatives explore the impact that the pandemic has had on the sector, and you're all very, very acutely aware of that and the great challenges. Principally today, our panel will look at the way forward, exploring that together, how we can work collegiality and partnership to build back better. Critically for you joining us today, we're going to be looking very closely at the funding programs which are available to build new skills that support you and your staff as industry begins to reopen. Now, our first speaker this morning has a track record of achievement in industry. Uh, her name is Roisin McKee, and Roisin is Project Director for Hospitality and Tourism Skills, the HATS Network. The, the Hospitality and Tourism Skills Employer-Led Network, formed in 2019, brings together a diverse uh, mix of employers from across the hospitality and tourism sector in Northern Ireland, alongside industry associations and key delivery partners <coughs> and partners from government and education to collectively address issues around sector image, the attractiveness of employment, and skills development uh, within the sector. HATS is supported by Invest Northern Ireland, to whom we thank, and under the Collaborative Growth Programme. It's my great pleasure to welcome the Project Director for HATS, Roshi McKee. Thanks, Aidan, for that introduction. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to be part of this event to kick off the Tourism Skills Recovery Initiative, which I hope is the first of many to help the industry pave a strong path forward. Um, I'd just like to take the opportunity to congratulate the colleges firstly um, in the collective effort in getting this skills series in place and to the Department for the Economy for their funding support. It's certainly a very welcome initiative as our industry prepares for recovery. So I've been asked this morning really just to set the context for this recovery initiative, um, to update you a little bit on the HATS network and its activities in this space, and to highlight some new skills supports that sit outside the college offer, um, which Rachel will cover off later. So there's no doubt um, that this last year has been challenging and tough um, with the effects of the pandemic having touched on all of our lives and severely impacting our industry. However, we must look forward and build a path to recovery which embraces new thinking, new skills, new norms, and we've got strong and resilient people in our industry to help rebuild tourism. It's out of crisis that we have an opportunity to build back better. 
and we need to inspire future generations to enter the industry and those that are already in the industry to stay. We have a unique opportunity to reset the status quo when it comes to skills and professional development um, in tourism and hospitality. Building back with a better skilled workforce that's agile, that's resilient, that's confident, can adapt to changing customer needs is critical. And now is the time to invest in talent. Each and every one of you as managers has a critical role to play in that rebuild to ensure that we emerge stronger from the crisis. So when we look at the context for this initiative and its focus on management skills in particular, um, it has been born out of our industry insights, which highlight the need to equip our managers with critical skills to build their resilience, to re-engage and motivate their teams as they transition back to work um, and through recoveries. Managers will need to be much more visible to lead from the front and instill confidence um, in their teams. And I know that the college teams have worked um, to build the highlighted skills such as resilience, customer um, orientation, um, effective communication, emotional intelligence into this management series, um, which you'll hear more about um, from Rachel um, shortly. Aidan has touched just very briefly in terms of the HATS network, but just by way of intro to those that um, are not familiar with who we are and, uh, and what we're doing in this space. HATS is an employer-led collaboration um, to help attract, build and retain a skilled workforce in hospitality and tourism. And um, we were formed pre-COVID um, and born out of a robust evidence base around sector skills needs um, pre the pandemic. It, it does bring together a strategic group of employers and the industry associations that you can see on the screen here and key delivery partners from government um, and critical are our education partners, um, both at university level and across the six colleges. And there's a collective focus on addressing talent attraction and retention issues in the sector. And that continued collaboration um, is going to be more critical now um, than ever before. Our work streams um, is focused really around three areas, the attract and retain, which does very much what it says in the tin. Um, the attraction piece is about maximising the promotion of the sector to ensure that we can grow a talent pipeline and that we're not facing a skills crisis in three to five years time um, as we move through um, the, the recovery from the pandemic. And the retain piece is promoting the good working practices and building industry awareness about the available skills support that's there. And that's part of obviously what um, this morning's session is about. And being able to encourage um, employers in the sector to actually take up um, those supports. The engage piece, which has largely been, I suppose, a, a key focus for um, HATS Network um, in the last while, has been about building partnerships um, to help realise our ambitions around skills, bending the spend, for want of a better word, so actually working to make sure we can direct some of the existing skills investment to priority areas within the industry, and then securing new funds and investment um, where there are gaps that have been identified. Pre-COVID, the sector, as you'll be well um, aware, faced a number of skills challenges, and they're particularly around sector attractiveness um, and retention. And the pandemic has only worked to actually amplify many of these. Our recent insights highlight a need to focus efforts on upskilling and reskilling um, to retain talent in the sector. We also need to address emerging skills needs as a result of the pandemic um, around management skills, adapting to changing customer needs. Um, we've got much more um, conscious consumers, um, higher expectations, hygiene measures are important, and digital skills to name but a few. Um, there's also the need to balance some of these short-term supports with also a look at keeping our eye on growing our future talent pipeline, especially in light of the reputational damage that the impact of COVID-19 has had on the sector as a viable career choice. 
And it will be good to hear your perspective on the challenges that you face and foresee. And we have some poll questions um, built into the session this morning for you to feedback on. So I did note that um, one of the strands of work within the HATS network is about engage, and that engagement is very much at a strategic level. Um, and in that space, it's been focused on influencing and informing um, the skills funding and the interventions to support the sector skills needs in the short term, but also in the medium to longer term, such as this particular initiative, and also a feed in to the apprenticeship recovery plan and the tourism recovery plan and um, the longer term Northern Ireland skills strategy, which will be coming forward from the Department for the Economy soon. And we hope that these will bring forward further supports um, for the sector um, to help it rebuild in the in the months uh, and the years ahead. We've recently launched, um, which some of you may have had access to, a skills funding guide to raise awareness and ease of access to the range of available funded supports that are actually there to help businesses um, invest in talent. And you can access a copy of the guide um, in the link documents um, as part of this session. Um, I don't want to steal Rachel's thunder um, because I know she's actually going to be sharing with you some of the specific supports that are available from the colleges. However, I do want to touch on a couple of um, wider supports that are detailed within the guide um, and others that have come on stream um, just fairly recently. So apprenticeships have a crucial role to play in rebuilding tourism. Um, for those of you that are familiar with them, they offer structured progression routes, which can support career development for existing employees, as well as supporting a future talent pipeline. Um, an apprenticeship recovery package um, with financial incentives as of yesterday has just been extended for another year um, due to the ongoing restrictions and businesses not being able to, um, to access, access, access that support. Um, and its focus is very much in, in supporting the retention of apprenticeships for businesses that have them, but equally um, financial incentives to be able to support the recruitment of um, new apprenticeships. And those details are all um, in the skills funding guide. So you can get the details and the monetary value that's attached to that. And I know one of the issues that we have as a sector whenever it comes to apprenticeships at the moment is, is really the all age funding um, for apprenticeships um, is still a barrier. However, um, I'm pleased to say that we're hoping to see change on that soon as the Department for the Economy has made a commitment to removing age restrictions on funding to accommodate over 25 year olds. Um, so that's something we'll keep you posted on. As a result of the pandemic, we're seeing a heightened awareness on um, mental health and well-being, and we can't underestimate the impact that that is having on our people. Um, there is funded support and resources for managers in this area. And what I have on the screen is really just a synopsis of the links to some of the supports that are in the skills funding guide um, that I've referenced. And I'd encourage you to look at this as part of supporting not only your, your team's well-being, but also in terms of building your own resilience going forward. It's important um, that in a post-COVID scenario that managers are creating an environment where it's okay to not be okay and where people are not fearful or reluctant about sharing their vulnerabilities and expressing um, their true selves. There are many benefits to investing in the training for the individual um, as well as the business, um, not least the ability to retain talent um, by helping staff to refresh and upgrade their skills, which we all have to do now. Um, and within that, you've got the benefits of being able to build the confidence, increase loyalty, motivation and the morale um, and a team that's much more engaged and productive, um, which is good at a team level and it's good at a business and it's good for us as a sector. And it's a way to attract a new talent with a, a reputation for investing in people. So any investment in talent that's made now will pay dividends, um, not just in the short term, but in years to come. The UK government has also just recently launched a help to grow scheme for businesses across the UK. The scheme has two strands, um, management and digital. The management scheme um, commences in June 
and it has access to a 12-week program which will be delivered by leading business schools across the UK. The digital scheme is due in the autumn um, where small businesses will be able to access um, free and partial advice on how technology can boost their performance. Um, and there's a link there in terms of where you can register now um, your interest on the Help to Grow um, website. For those that may need to recruit, um, Job Start is a new scheme which will help businesses with recruitment and training for new job opportunities. Um, it's focused obviously on young people at risk of long-term unemployment, so 16 to 24 year olds. The incentives within that is providing employers with um, £1,500 per job opportunity for setup costs and training. And it covers wages and related costs um, for a period of up to 25 hours per week. Uh, again, there's further details um, that are provided on the link and we'll be bringing forward through the HATS network a sector webinar on this specific um, scheme in early May um, with the Department for Employers in the sector. Our people in tourism, regardless of the size of the business, are at the heart of this industry and are our greatest asset. Um, and it's the retention and upskilling of that tunnel that will play a critical part in the sector's recovery as we rebuild and move forward. Um, and it will bring benefits to the industry uh, for many years to come. So as you're making your plans for reopening, and we hope a date is imminent, um, I wish you well in your preparations. And I urge you to take up the opportunities offered in this skills recovery program um, and the other training supports to not only refresh and develop um, and hone your skills and that of your teams, but to build back better, to grow an industry reputation as a highly skilled and professional um, team and a place that people of all ages aspire to work in. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Roisin, for that brilliant presentation. I want to just pick up a couple of points. I know that you very kindly agreed to take a few questions at the end, but just I was taking some notes whenever you were talking. I find that just really, really engaging. You talked about how the industry is preparing for uh, the recovery, and I noticed the, uh, from my point of view, the slightly wry amusement, your tone whenever you said we're hoping for a date quite soon. I think everyone in the sector is hoping for that and hopefully we'll, we'll get that very soon. But you talked about preparing for recovery. What was brilliant about today is it's about ensuring that updates are being into every, given to everyone. Communication is absolutely essential. And it was lovely to hear you talking about the skill support which is available. How interesting for everyone to hear about the importance you place on resilience. And my goodness, we've all been tested in the last year or so. We at the Met were running a, a graduate academy for Microsoft that had taken 18 months to design that. It started on the, I think the 16th of March last year and four days into it, we had to move everything online. That's just one small example of thousands of examples that people uh, have had to, to embrace change. Uh, from my point of view, coming from a media background, I was very interested in the, the broader uh, issues, but also listening to, I'm based today, broadcasting today from E3, our E3, award-willing E3 building on the Springfield Road. We're just half a mile away from Dan's Bar, and, and I'm sure everyone in, on the call and everyone in the sector knows about Gerald and Janine Keenan and what they've done and what they've tried to do and the changes that they've made. And when you hear on the radio and TV, it really does, you, you know, become terribly, terribly impactful. We've also heard employers like Michael Dean talking about the essential you know, how essential it is to get dates and moving forward. I thought that was uh, amazing. And just on the radio this morning, we forget sometimes the figures that are involved. Tesco spent 900 million pounds uh, making adjustments and employing new staff uh, in the last year. Uh, so it really is an incredibly challenging time. What on a human level is so uh, lovely is to hear you saying it's okay not to be okay. And we're all in that situation whereby we, we're having to make changes and support each other. You talked, you highlighted, and you'll talk and share your expertise, Roisin, a little bit later on about training. We're running a graduate academy for PwC at the minute. And Alan, Alan Drake, one of the senior managers in that company, was, was saying to students recently, he's responsible for over 100 qualifications in CPD at the minute. And then one of his colleagues said, and that's likely to increase with the challenges that the sector and industry is facing. So everyone is in the same a situation, Roisin, we're very grateful to you for sharing your thoughts and your expertise and your empathy 
uh, today, and we look forward to chatting to you in the Q&A a little bit later on. Just a reminder, as Roisin told us, that the polls are available there and answer those questions openly and honestly. That's about communicating today. And if you have questions, just put them into the chat and our, our panel will be very keen to deal with those later on. So thank you very much indeed, uh, Now, So as you know, Tourism Northern Ireland has responsibility for the development of tourism product and experience right across Northern Ireland. But it's also responsible for the marketing of Northern Ireland as a tourist destination to visitors within Northern Ireland and from the Republic of Ireland. And I heard Howard Hastings talking uh, recently on radio about just the number of people from the Republic of Ireland who've never stayed overnight in a hotel an Airbnb or a B&B in Northern Ireland, that's something which is top of the list. So it's my great pleasure to welcome the Director of Business Support and Events, uh, Anya Kearney. Anya, we look forward to hearing your thoughts this morning, this afternoon. Great, thank you so much. I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be uh, with you all today and participate in this first series of masterclasses, which I think are really important um, in preparing the sector um, to not only reopen, um, but prepare our critically important staff in terms of uh, getting uh, ready um, uh, as, as we await those important dates. So today I'm here to give you a quick overview on where I think tourism is at things to consider as we do reopen and what Tourism Northern Ireland is doing and will be doing to support you in that process. So the first thing I would like to say is that I uh, undoubtedly think that tourism in Northern Ireland is a world-class product. Um, in 2019, pre-COVID, um, I think it's really important we look back to remember just how well we did. And tourism in Northern Ireland was worth over one billion pounds and employed over 70,000 uh, people. In late 20 or in early 2020, we, you know, we were looking at the success of the Open Championship, a record breaking year for tourism with more than 5.3 million trips that have been taken. And we were just about to embark on the next exciting stage of our international journey with the launch of a new experience brand, Northern Ireland Embrace the Giant Spirit. And the destination brand was designed to promote Northern Ireland on the island and internationally with an aim of increasing visitor numbers and ensuring economic impact across all regions in Northern Ireland itself. And when we launched it in late 2019, it was met with absolutely phenomenal success at World Travel Market. And I think none of us expected in 2020 to be stopped in our tracks just so um, uh, urgently as we were with COVID-19. And we are conscious that no section of society has been left untouched. And out with uh, the health crisis itself, our very own sector um, has more or less found itself on its knees. And the consequences have been far reaching across all parts of Northern Ireland. But I think that for it's really important for us to remember one year on that from this adversity that we have seen so many businesses using this opportunity to very much play out to that giant spirit that Northern Ireland is represented by through innovation, diversification and adapting to the new norms. I never thought I would see um, experiential tours moving um, from real life experiences to being able to be delivered authentically online or to see conferences and festivals being reorganised to hybrid digital events combined with smaller live experiences that still met with very, very um, tight and safety conscious constraint um, operating environments. I never thought I would see El Fresco dining becoming the new norm in Northern Ireland, nor seeing the level of businesses that have faced really, really um, you know, severe um, health conscious operating environments still being able to deliver that service with an amazing um, giant uh, spirit. And I think that what that is testament to is that the same strong, resilient sector that has delivered exceptional growth over the last decade has stepped up once again. I remember back to the time when I first came into the tourist board and we were talking about how we were going to put Northern Ireland on the map. And yet within 10 years time, we had put Northern Ireland on the map. So I think many of you have been absolutely instrumental in that. And I applaud you in the leadership that already has been shown um, so far in what has been an exceptional and unprecedented year. And I know that you, when we, we, we look to reopening, that you will embrace the challenge that lies ahead of us with the same level of, of um, tenacity. Um, this slide, sorry, if I'm a little bit uh, late in this, I suppose we should just to look to that whole side of innovation and what we actually um, have seen coming through over the last, over the last year. 
But I think as we look to the future, um, what has been um, remarkable has been the extensive and rapid vaccination programme being rolled out across the UK, followed behind our, with Ireland and other parts um, of, 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 the, of the globe. And that gives us real hope that we hopefully will return to some, some form of new normal um, this year. What we do know is that consumer sentiment is really strong. And research is showing us that whilst many are still undecided about their holiday destination for 2021, they are dreaming of their next trip. And for many homes, um, the, the, the savings are at record eye high. For others, um, it's more about the chance of being able to escape, relax and spend quality time with loved ones. Um, and especially given how long it has been since people have been able to do that. When I look to uh, when the markets opened last year, I'm really, really heartened, as Aidan has said, to the level of visitors that we saw um, coming from the Republic of Ireland. We saw that um, those levels um, rising by nearly 200 percent, demonstrating not only um, do we have a latent demand um, sitting in the Republic of Ireland market, but we have a real opportunity for loads um, of, of visitors that maybe never thought about Northern Ireland as a holiday destination before, um, thinking about coming here for the first time. And hopefully that will build us, you know, a good solid platform to engage with them first in terms of coming to holiday here, um, but also to think about this becoming a repeatable um, uh, destination that they will consider future um, holidays as well. And the other thing that we've seen that has been really, really remarkable, I suppose, is the uptake in terms of travel to rural, less discovered parts of Northern Ireland um, being in demand and what has definitely been a new fine love of the great outdoors. And within this, what we have seen is, is definitely an emerging change towards more domestic local tourism. And I, I suppose with that, we see the all island market as being a key driver, both to the short term and the longer term opportunity, um, as well as looking at closer to home markets such as GB being really, really important to, to that recovery. And within this context, we really need to focus on encouraging a new, the new find interest in staycation and shop local. We need to assist visitors in uncovering those hidden gems that many of them are very much um, unaware of. And we need to engage in an unprecedented level of civic advocacy in terms of helping people understand amazing experiences, people and places that we have to uncover. Um, I would ask you to think about the role that not only your staff and um, uh, your teams can play in, in delivering an exceptional service, but also in helping through um, social um, and digital platforms, people understand um, the hidden gems that they can find with the experience that you will have on offer, but also those wonderful experiences that they may be unaware of that might sit around you. One of the big things that we have found from our consumer research, both in the domestic market as well as within the Republic of Ireland market, is just how, how much of Northern Ireland remains to be discovered. We're all close to it. We're all we're all aware of those lovely places that we can orientate people towards, as well as introducing them to the people that sit behind the stories. Um, and I think there's a real opportunity for us to play our individual roles as well as our collective roles in being able to unlock that potential. But we realise the role ahead will not be easy. Um, and we see that people are looking for authenticity. They're looking for sustainability safer activities and even simple activities. Um, we know that people want to have, um, I suppose, opportunities and experiences led out before them where they don't have to think hard, where someone has reassured them in terms of how easy it is to get there, how what they're doing will be safe, how it is in line with guidance and regulations. And there's a real opportunity for Northern Ireland to capitalise on not only our unique rural tourism offering, but also our warm and friendly cities and our key places of outstanding natural beauty. We know that consumer sentiment is telling us that travellers will become much, much more conscious in the decisions that they're making, and it'll be much more value driven, in, in including um, their newfound sense of community. So people don't just want to be going and engaging in the things they're doing themselves. They also want to know about how that will be adding value to local community. So don't forget about that as part of your messaging. Our research is also showing us that reassurance is absolutely critical to conversion. Visible reassurance that your experience is covered safe will be absolutely key. Consumer research is telling us that this is really, really critical in terms of moving people from the desire stage into the actual buying stage. And in particular, it's very important for the older demographic 
who we know will be important to opening up our sector, both midweek as well as across the year. If you're not already, I would encourage you to sign up um, or get your company signed up to We're Good to Go certification. Again, our consumer research is telling us that it's a recognised independent verification of COVID secure operations and it assists in giving consumers that reassurance and confidence they need to make bookings. Tourism Northern Ireland is deeply committed to rebuilding with you and reopening um, uh, you know, over the forthcoming months. We, we recognise how difficult it has been, um, but contrary to the views of many, we believe the business of tourism is far from broken. We have all proven that through collaboration, commitment, innovation, and most of all, our giant spirit, that we can achieve against the odd. What I am certain of is that like our recent successful renaissance, the people will be central to recovery and growth. As Roshan has said, people are our most valuable asset, and it's really important that we lead them through this period of change with confidence, um, with um, I, I, what I would say, reassurance for they themselves, and also reminding them not only what we've achieved, but also what we can achieve as we work through this together. I believe that the dynamic, innovative, proactive, talented professionals um, that we already have within the sector, as well as those that we will recruit over the forthcoming weeks and months, will help us reshape and rebuild our businesses. We understand that businesses will, will not be able to operate as they did in the past, but they need to embrace the new opportunities that present before them and hope that that will build us back as a resilient and more tenacious um, sector for the future. We believe that Embrace a Giant Spurt positions us um, uniquely in terms of being able to capitalise on the opportunity at hand. We've been working with a lot of international um, experts who think that it is this brand that will really help us stand out, not only in the island of Ireland, but also across the international and global world. I think that what makes this brand really, really unique is that it's credible and it has been built on what we know that is very, very special about us and what visitors are telling us sets our experience aside. The brand itself is not new. It's an evolution of the giant experience that we have been growing and nurturing over the last number of years. It will be critically important to survival, to revival and to growth. So what I would say is that, you know, it has been a while since everybody has been back in the business. Do refresh yourself with the materials, the toolkits and the videos that we have online on tourismni.com and also use it as a way of inspiring and, you know, exciting um, your staff in terms of the opportunity that we have in the forthcoming months ahead. I'll just remind you of the characteristics that really set us aside. And I think that these characteristics are the ones that, again, um, have been really, really important um, to, to the success that we've had and are going to be critical to the success for the future. So our big hearted spirit. And so much of that comes from the generosity and the hospitality um, that we have been able to provide. And again, I would advise you to um, remind staff, especially those that are front of house, um, that even though that, yes, um, when we open, we will still have certain levels of constraints and operational conditions that we have to fulfill. But it's very much them, the personality, how they do things, stories that sit behind that, engaging with the people um, that have set um, the quality of the experience that Northern Ireland delivers aside. That pioneering spirit, um, the fact that our imagination, our ambition, our hardworking perseverance is the thing that has brought us to what was such a successful year in 2019. And again, reminding ourselves that if we embrace the next 12, 24, 36 months with exactly that same spirit that we will get through this. The legendary spirit, the stories, the myths, the writers, the poets, the heritage, but most importantly, the wit and the humour um, that we have. The fact that we have faced harder and darker times before and that we will do it again. And ultimately, the elemental spirit that probably has never been more important as it is today, as people are looking to get outside, to embrace the new outdoors. And even for those businesses that don't have the opportunity to maybe be part of a, a you know, a lush green um, hinterland, to remind that when it's positioning itself, that it can bring a little bit of the outdoors indoors through, you know, a lot of the um, uh, of the, the, the garden operations that it has. But also, even if it's not able to do that, how it can also 
also um, help uh, promote and advertise and, and sell the story of the wonderful places that we have in Northern Ireland um, that people can also discover. So I suppose from a TNI perspective, it's really important for you to know that we and the department um, are continuing to work to try and support you um, in reopening. The Minister for the Economy established the Tourism um, Recovery Steering Group back in April of 2020, and it has been a, an absolutely critical um, uh, working group and steering group to um, input into securing things like the grants that have gone out to the sector um, in lobbying UK government in terms of continued uh, support for the, for, for the different schemes that have been in place, but probably most importantly for developing up a new recovery action plan that's due to be uh, launched in the forthcoming weeks ahead. It has also been able to shape the Economic Recovery Action Plan that was recently announced by the Department for Economy, which um, includes the development of a new sustainable regenerative tourism strategy that will focus on economic growth, social well-being, and the protection of the environment in the next decade. This plan will allow us to develop and deliver industry-wide training to the tourism sector, as well as campaigns, additional funding to provide skills and capabilities to improve and grow the product and offering and the business model that sits behind those. We ourselves will be very much focusing on stimulating demand when the time is right. Um, much of our campaign activity has been put on hold, but we stand ready to react with a whole range of campaign activity that's been um, that's, that's sitting ready to go as soon as 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 travel restrictions have been uh, have been lifted. If I can speak, um, we will be continuing with our always on digital and influencer activity, switching messaging from first um, from dreaming into planning in the next two weeks, and then hopefully with forthcoming dates from the Northern Ireland Executive, we'll move that very very promptly from uh, planning into booking. With the, in the economic recovery plan, you'll see that we've already um, had the commitment for a holiday voucher scheme, and we hope to launch that later this year, again, subject to the timing um, the, the, that's coming forward from the executive. And we know that this will be critical in terms of boosting um, uh, demand at the time that's right when those restrictions ease and the sector is allowed to reopen. And even though international travel has been put on hold, it's been really important for us to stay connected with our overseas markets. And that's why our business solution teams has been working very, very hard over the past year, engaging within Republic of Ireland, GB and overseas markets through virtual conferences, events, including Meet the Buyer that's actually happening um, this week um, and is due to continue um, into next week. These events will allow you, the industry, to showcase what's available in Northern Ireland for future programmes and activities, making sure that Northern Ireland is well placed to be front of mind once international travel resumes. So what I would say is thank you to those of you who have been um, participating in that. Uh, we have had such positive feedback from the international markets um, and also from the DMCs that are programming on the island of Ireland. I would encourage those that haven't been engaged to get engaged. There's going to be a whole raft of activity that's um, rolled out across the space of the next um, 12 months. And again, all of it can be found on tourismni.com. Um, in terms of uh, supporting excellence and, uh, and enterprise, um, I suppose one of the, the first initiatives that we did last year and will be continuing into this year is that we um, launched a new micro, micro site, which was called the COVID-19 Support Hub. Um, and it contained everything from um, guidance and funding streams, support available, guidelines for reopening, risk assessments, operational calculators, and details on, on, on both pre-recorded webinars that we already had run, as well as um, other webinars we'd be running throughout the year. We've actually just launched a new website that integrates that COVID, COVID um, hub into the overall website. And I would encourage you all to continue to check in with that um, and to um, sign up to our newsletters. We have an extensive program that's going to be rolled out over the next six months, in particular for reopening. Um, we've just had a phenomenal uptake in terms of the reopening webinars that ran last week. They're available and online and um, they've been tailored dependent on what sector you're coming from. Um, they are at a, at a high level, but we're really, really keen to hear back from each of you in terms of maybe tips and tools and tactics that you feel would be really helpful for either you or for your staff um, so that we can get those prepared over the next number of weeks um, as, as, as we do get prepared and, and rolled out. 
We also introduced a new um, business support um, helpline and we have had thousands of calls um, since March 2020. Um, again, I would encourage you to continue to use this. Um, it depends on what size of business you are. You may, may already have um, a, 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 a able to, to access expertise and advice, but certainly for smaller businesses, we find this really, really helpful. Um, what we have found is that it's been a useful way of understanding where there might be gaps of understanding or um, information that we um, can helpfully go and find for you. Um, we provide it direct to the business itself, and then we'll use that as a means of updating the overall information on TNI.com. That's everything from HR queries to um, um, information on contracts, um, you know, especially in the context of refunds, bonding, all of that, marketing information that's that's coming through again, understanding what's available through funds, it's there, regulations that's a change, as well as operational guidance um, and other very, very um, uh, tangible and tactical uh, pieces of advice. So if you haven't availed of that, please do use it, um, uh, you know, again uh, this year. And finally, from a service excellence perspective, um, just to, to call out again um, in the context of, of, of we're good to go, um, that scheme will be rolled out um, um, to June of this year. Um, it has recently been recognised by World Travel and Tourism Council, um, so therefore it's been recognised at a, an international and global um, level. And as it said, um, it's one that is um, being called out um, by consumers on the island of Ireland as well as within GB as being recognised as an affirmative stamp um, for, for safe travel. Um, we will also be um, rolling out an extensive um, enterprise development programme for those of you that were able to avail of it. Um, we had over 60 sessions this year engaging more than six and a half thousand individuals and that was everything from financial and business management right the way through to digital development topics. Um, we um, have launched that new website, as I've talked about, but um, interestingly, one of the things we've done is we've got a new CRM system, and I would encourage you to go in and register yourself and any of your staff that are using it, because what that's going to allow us to do is, is to serve you up a much, much more tailored and bespoke service where we can push to you content that maybe you may not be aware of, that we think is relevant either to your sector, to the type of, of business you are, and also where you are um, in, in, in your life cycle. It also allows us to um, capture one-to-one -one, um, feedback from you in terms of the type of information that you're looking for, um, whether that's from um, uh, specific types of funding that we might be able to provide, or um, dedicated um, uh, research and insights that we might be able to develop for you, your sector and your type of business. And finally, I would encourage you to um, uh, look at the extensive piece of um, trends and insights data that our research team have been developing. We have been running um, uh, four weekly um, consumer um, research, which allows you to be really on the pulse point in terms of um, what consumers are looking for. And I think that will be pretty important as the, as the sector uh, reopens. Um, as well as that, we will be having an extensive piece um, of research coming out in the next couple of weeks around a review we've done on the Republic of Ireland market, which is going to be really, really important um, to, 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 to growth. Um, and again, if you're signed up there, we'll be able to um, keep you uh, posted on, on, on that. So finally, just to give you a heads up that um, we are hoping to have a tourism conference um, in the next um, couple of weeks. Um, we're hoping for that date to be released um, next week. Um, it'll take place in early May. And within this, we'll give you a lot more detail on both the recovery strategy, um, what we'll be doing, key markets that we'll be focusing on, dedicated campaigns we'll be um, running over uh, the space of the next 8 to 12 weeks in conjunction with Tourism Ireland and also very specific support on um, that we will be providing to you everything from customer service excellence training to um, additional um, uh, capital and uh, um, revenue support um, uh, options we'll have available as well as our TED um, program we have. But I just wanted to give you the reassurance that um, we understand just how difficult um, the last uh, 12 months have been. We realise that um, that uh, the next uh, number of months will be difficult, um, but we do believe that you already have shown a remarkable resi resilience, creativity and innovation. And as we work through this together, we do believe that we will get back to the success that we had in 2019. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anya.
Uh, I'm going to get into uh, in, into big trouble for what I'm going to say now from my, my colleague Donna Convery beside me. That was so uplifting, and I'm just putting it out there, and I don't expect people to answer in the chat, but on you, there's an assembly election in Northern Ireland in 2022, and if you stand for election, I'll vote for you, and I think everybody on this call will as well. What an uplifting presentation. What a celebration of what is good about everything, not only in the sector, but about Northern Ireland. A couple of key points uh, there. And then questions can go into the chat. We've got questions already from Margie and from Jordan, and our panel will come to those later on. Thank you, Anya, for, for uh, developing some of the themes that, that Roisin talked about this morning. You talked about the critical importance of staff and colleagues. And you made a very impassioned uh, comment when you asked everyone today to pause just to consider what you've all done together in the last uh, 12 months. Support is a recurring theme. You talked about dates, you talked about the package of support and grants, and Rachel's gonna talk about that, that partnership with education, which is important. But just a tiny personal observation, you talked about how no one in industry could have expected what happened in, in the year ahead. I was staying in, in Sleeve Donard on the 16th of March uh, last year, and I fully expected to be back there again, staying overnight at Easter. I didn't expect not to be. I can only imagine what you as professionals working in industry, supporting thousands of jobs and families with ambitious plans, uh, and what you've said is the celebration of the tenacity, the resilience, the innovation, uh, and that giant spirit which you talked about. I, I remember hearing Radio Ulster a couple of years ago, hearing Michael Dean talking for the expansion, talking about his desire for the expansion of cafe culture uh, across Northern Ireland. Well, that's very much here to stay, and that's you know one good thing to come all come out of all of that. On you reminded us that every single person has a part to play by working in partnership, whatever we are, whether we're consumers, whether we're frontline workers, whether we're managers and leaders and funders. Because I think the theme of today is about partnership, and we believe that industry and education really is an imperative partnership moving forward. Because today is about building back better, recovering, and giving everyone uh, the the opportunities to invest in the sector and promote jobs and and uh, careers for people coming into it. And that takes us very in a very opposite way to the next part of our our presentation. Just remind people to post questions in the chat. Because Northern Ireland's six further education colleges operate across 40 big campuses right across Northern Ireland, in addition to which there are 400 community uh, outreach locations as well. All of the colleges offer everything from essential skills, GCSEs, AS and A2, BTECs, um, higher national certificates, foundation degrees, apprenticeships, and all sorts of programs. And the further education we believe uh, colleges are at the centre of providing that kind of vocational and educational training, which is going to be essential to help Anya, to help Roisin, to help all of you industry professionals build back better. So with her thoughts on this very special occasion, it's my very great pleasure to welcome the Economic Development Manager from Belfast Metropolitan College, Rachel Burns. Rachel. Oh, thank you, Aidan. Um, so yes, thank you for that. And I'm, I'm working at Belfast Met, but I'm here today to showcase the range of support from all the colleges. Um, so each of the colleges has their own business development team um, who work on all the programs that I'm going to speak about. Um, and we're, we're keen to engage with you as a business and find out how we can support you. So hopefully today we'll generate some ideas and thoughts um, as to how you can potentially engage with your local college and support skill development um, within your business. And um, so the first program I'd like to chat about today is Skills Focus. Um, so Skills Focus is funded by the Department for the Economy and um, since April 2020 it has offered 100% funding and um, which has been confirmed as carrying on now until March 2022. Um, the funding to help support um, SMEs and upskilling their staff to achieve qualifications. So core criteria around this program is that a company or social enterprise now um, must have under 250 employees and courses, not the business, but um, the courses should be in a priority sector and qualifications should be at a level two and above. And um, activities that wouldn't be supported normally under skills focus would um, include like uh, training that's a legal requirement through the business, um, as well as a, a renewal or a refresher of a qualification. Um, but you're probably wondering, OK, put all that into context. What does that mean for my business? So um, I've put together a few courses. Um, so if you could use the example potentially of a, of a hotel chain. So, um, through these courses, um, I've kind of picked different different uh, job roles within a hotel that you could do. So if staff are working in food and drink handling role, there's there's food safety, there's allergen awareness. Now, um, 
some of those could be refresher courses which might not be eligible but you could potentially upskill a wider volume of staff in food safety and allergen awareness and um, there's professional cookery there's barista skills at level two bartending and um, customer facing roles or, or front of house for example there's customer service training and complaints handling and um, i'd put tour guiding in as well because you, you have that and it's very relevant to the tourism industry and um, management and support roles so across the whole business there'll be different range of managers so there's leadership and management which again we'll touch on later um, but there's levels three, levels five, level seven, um, sevens right up to strategic uh, management uh, director level qualifications. Um, human resource practice, so there's um, CIPD courses, um, business administration, um, accounting technician. So you could have your accounting technician institute, um, or I know some of the colleges as well offer book bookkeeping. bookkeeping. Um, as well as then digital and professional marketing courses. So the, the range of levels for the digital and professional marketing is quite vast too. So you can have a start at level two and uh, can take you through the social media channels, this, the, the basic digital marketing strategy, right through to the Chartered Institute of Marketing, which is levels three, uh, four and six. Um, and they all focus on, on, on strategy and use of the different technologies there. Um, we also, there, there, there's IT, um, courses as well. So right from spreadsheets, um, you know, using Microsoft Word, using Microsoft um, Outlook, PowerPoint, all the way through to just, you know, how to do different networking softwares and creating apps and software development courses um, could be really relevant if you're looking to develop a new platform through your business. It's a lot of the businesses have had to pivot over the past um, year due to COVID, so software development may be an option, and cybersecurity because data has never been more important. So again, we have cybersecurity courses. Now, not every college will deliver every one of these courses. However, speak to your local college's business development team and they'll point you in the right direction. Um, if you are interested in skills focus, um, if you get in touch with your local college, I'll have the details at the end of um, this presentation. Um, and we will just come out, discuss your uh, needs and prepare what we call a baseline audit, which is essentially an evaluation of the training needs and the skill, skills requirements of your business. And um, the business development teams will be working uh, with multiple businesses. So if they have similar needs to you, it could be that you could join another cohort um, with other businesses, which provides a great opportunity to share ideas, network with each other, uh, view how other businesses have approached similar problems um, or alternatively, Alternatively, if you're a larger organization, um, what you could do is you could pull staff together and we could create a completely bespoke and tailored qualification um, just to your particular staff needs. Um, so I, I have a short video, which I'm hoping will work, um, just to, to show you how um, a local, well, how a company, Guapo Mexican, has uh, worked with Northwest Regional College um, on skills focus. Let me just check that this will work. Guapo Fresh Mexican is a Mexican food outlet. We do fresh food every day. Uh, we pride ourselves on our food being fresh and homemade. The business needed skills training, firstly as a result of my own lack of experience. This is the first time I've ever had a business, so there was lots of different elements of the business where I needed support, and then also with the staff that I brought on board, making sure that they were And we're all looking were forward to seeing the video, and this might be a time to uh, type questions into the chat bar for our panel to pick up later. Food hygiene and management training as well. Claire's Barriers and Frustration. It is a here. Mexican food outlet. We eat do fresh food every day. Uh, we pride ourselves on our food being the fresh and homemade. Coming up with recipes in terms the of business product needed product skills How training. To Firstly, as a result of my offer, own lack of experience, this is the first time I've ever had a business. So there was lots of the business of the business where I needed support, and then also with the staff that I brought on board, making sure that they were up skilled with terms of customer service, food hygiene, and that. Training as well. 
Bano Vegas program was a vital program in terms of getting me up and started with the business. It helped me to um, launch my product. It also helped me to have a greater understanding of the, so the, the products and the menu specifications. The skills focus the side of it with the staff has been tremendous. We so, um, have that was, was customer service training conducted here with um, the premises so the for two days. Um, and that and helped really to just to refresh everybody in key in terms program of giving the best possible program in terms of getting me up and started with so the a level two in customer care. To, um, I've done my level two for the hygiene and I've done our ILM level five in managing the products and the menu specifications. The skills of the side of the customers have been keeping coming back. We have had customer service training here with the has been required and um, it's small and dependent um, business and with a start off as a team of three, I now have a team of nine here in Derry and a team of four in Oma and they get them through training. I'm the level two food hygiene and I'm also... And I think, uh, Rachel, that video has given a real flavour of some of the really innovative work which is going on in Northwest Regional College and other colleges right across the sector. 40, co 40 main college sites and 400 out centres working with employers and bespoke programmes and a whole range of courses which have additional qualifications to them, which will be of great advantage not only to those participating, but the businesses as well. Um, I'm not sure the video um, worked there for everybody, unfortunately. I think it was maybe synced up um, incorrectly, but I will add the the link to it um, in in the chat at the end of the of the conversation here. So, um, Guapo Mexicano they worked with um, Northwest College to upskill their staff in customer care and food hygiene, um, as well as leadership and management in under Skills Focus program. Um, they also then. They also then used Innovate Us, which is another program uh, funded by the Department for the Economy to help themselves help develop new food products. So Innovate Us, um, as I say, funded by the Department for the Economy and provides fully funded training to help small businesses with under 50 employees embed skills that support innovation of a new product, process or service. And um, when you contact a college about Innovate Us, a member of the business development team will meet with you to discuss the idea about what you want to innovate and develop in the business. Um, after getting a clear idea um, of your business need, what we'll do is we'll develop a project plan and align you with one of our delivery lecturers um, who will provide one-on-one -on -one training and show you how to create that new product, process or service. Um, you can have up to three projects, all with a maximum of 60 hours. And one of the huge benefits of Innovate Us is that the training is delivered um, at completely flexible. You know, it's at a time that suits you and works around your business needs. And then when we step away, you have the skills embedded within your business then to carry on to innovate um, and develop it yourselves. So um, just to give a few examples then of Innovate Us um, and some scope. So um, this is just a small number of the areas that we're, we're able to support. So IT. Um, the colleges have been working with businesses during the pandemic um, to help them pivot their business online. We've been showing companies how to use technologies to engage with customers. Um, so, for example, showing a training company how to set up a virtual learning platform to help them engage better. Um, colleges have also supported projects with tourism companies, such as um, developing VR and um, virtual reality tours so that they can um, still continue to reach their customers during the pandemic. Um, podcasting has been a, a very big one recently to continue to engage with customers. Um, later on, we, we will have a, I'll point you in the direction of a podcasting um, skill session we have coming up as well. Um, so in, in product design, the colleges offer support um, in the product design process, taking companies through um, early conceptualization stages and showing them how to use the likes of CAD software to design a product um, right through to 3D printing and, and showing that actual first proof of concept prototype um, and developing it through the 3D printer. So um, food development. Um, so the colleges support small businesses who are working on creating new food products. So we've worked with a lot of um, businesses in the likes of St. George's Market, et cetera, um, to help them really create a product. So we can profile ingredients. We can show you how to standardize recipes, how to upscale your production. So maybe you have a food product that you've been making at home and you have, there's such a demand for it, you need to then learn how to um, upscale the production. You have a small commercial kitchen, perhaps. So we will show you how to do that, still keeping the standard and quality of the food that's being developed. 
Um, for food outlets, um, we can look at what you're currently producing and show you how to update these, how to widen your product range and how to make them healthier. And fashion and textiles is one I, I'd thrown in as well. So uh, we, we provide support in that um, through the different design stages of fashion and, and textiles. So we can show you how to sew and manufacture garments. Now, fashion, we always think of, you know, clothing, but it, it's not. And we've taught companies how to design and develop the likes of a secure backpack for traveling. And we have uh, many ideas coming through from new mums and, and for use of uh, products for babies. Um, this is by no means um, the extent of the upskilling available. Um, if you want to explore a new product concept, uh, look at how to develop new processes or transform your current service. Get in touch with your local college who can discuss the range of support available through Innovate Us. Um, the program has been very positively received by businesses with hundreds of small companies coming through the program each year, leading to real innovation and growth. Um, I'm going to move on then to apprenticeships now. I'm going to try another video, so I'm really hoping this works again for us. Just bear with me one more second. So I'm Max Johnson, I'm 23. Uh, I go to Belfast Met College and I'm also an apprentice chef at Shoe Restaurant. Uh, well, I love working with my hands, especially in a place like Shoe, you get the best ingredients and then the love and the care that goes into the ingredients is just like blew my mind completely and then that all adds up to a great dish and that's even better than the sum of all the ingredients. So it's really exciting, really satisfying to work with such great ingredients. Some great questions and observations in the chat function. So and, I like the friendship uh, cause. Uh, I get Roisin on yet and Rachel will be happy to pick up on those in really uh, just a few minutes. Learning. Thanks so so very much for participating and some time to participate in the poll and chat. Push my knowledge and, and push myself rather than going straight into a kitchen and maybe not having a good basic understanding and having to play catch up. So you have two days in college and three or four days in the industry. So I, I love that balance. I think it's a great way to start. My name is Brian McCann. I'm the head chef proprietor of Shoe Restaurant in Belfast. The benefits of The Apprentice for Shoe Restaurant is to give a great introduction to the industry where they have a education two days a week through college. They get a qualification and they get three days real life experience with myself in the kitchen working on amazing produce and a great team in a career environment. The apprenticeship program should fit into this industry because this industry needs young, vibrant, enthusiastic, passionate people and it's a great opportunity for people to get on the, on the ladder. I think for other employers it's an integral part of our business now. We need to be uh, investing in younger people um, and giving them a taste of what the industry can provide them without really com committing 100% at the start. Highlights, I did a competition at IFEX, I didn't maybe get the result I wanted but the experience was just absolutely fantastic and just, I don't know, just weekends in shoe are just, uh, you might get absolutely hammered like during work but then sitting down with the guys after service and just pulling together as a team, it's just, the atmosphere is really, really good. Just get involved, just go for it and then it's a year so just go for it and you'll, it's the best way to find out if it's for you if you maybe do just a year in college and then you go to industry you might find out this isn't what I want to do but if you're in the environment and you're you're with a team I think it's so much better for your learning as well. Oh, just that's great. I think that one worked a bit better. <laughs> so, um, yes, apprenticeships. So that's just to give you a wee bit of a flavour. So apprenticeships provide a real opportunity for a business to pipeline their workforce. Um, it provides the students with confidence. Um, they're upskilled at the college a day a week and they can be putting those skills and on all the teachings and learnings into practice with the company. Um, there's a wide range of areas that you can have an apprentice in. So the video showed an apprentice working in hospitality. However, there's customer service, business administration, IT, accounting, front of house, and that is just to name a few. Um, my colleague, Mark Dorman, um, recently spoke with Rushi McKee and Tourism and I about the breadth and scope of apprenticeships across FE colleges. And so I would encourage you to give his video a watch if you're interested in finding out more about apprenticeships. So the details and the link there are on the screen and can be circulated again after today's session. Um, so that brings me over to the hospitality um, and tourism program that we've been, um, that part, this is the first webinar of. So um, the colleges have been working with industry and hospitality and tourism representatives, such as the Hats Network and Tourism and I, to get a real understanding of the skills requirement to develop 
a program that can help in the immediate to support managers and staff within the hospitality and tourism sector. Working together, we've developed this program, which brings together a short series of knowledge based webinars um, to, to help support some of the issues that were identified, as well as a range of technical skill sessions. Um, and then moving on then to the level three leadership management qualification that's been contextualized for the hospitality and tourism sector. Um, again, all of these are based on recurring skills that have been identified by industry and industry partners. So let me take you through them all individually then. So um, our Spotlight series runs every Wednesday for the next four weeks. Um, so this is a series of knowledge based webinars aimed at leaders and managers across the hospitality and tourism sector. So the first webinar today um, was centered around skills and support. Um, support that's critical, I suppose, to help to help um, with the reopening. Um, hope today that you'll have a better understanding then of the skills that are um, available within the sector to support you as you begin to move into the recovery stage. Um, the next webinar is on attraction and retention of staff. So this session is being delivered um, by Daily Recruitment, Titanic Belfast and College Tutors as a way to discuss the struggles that everyone is having both before the pandemic and now that has deepened as a result of it. So um, the presenters will um, speak on the solutions and ideas for taking a different approach to recruitment and how to re re retain staff. Um, the pathway in an organization isn't always straight. So people move around, they learn new skills, they find new interests and by working with your staff, um, you can support and keep the right people within your organization. Um, the following week, we'll then look at resilience. We've already touched on that today um, throughout other presentations, um, but it's never been more important. Um, managers have had to be responsive to every changing need, changing restrictions, supporting customers, supporting staff, um, the changing processes and service. They've had to be incredibly adaptive. Um, all the time, they themselves are going through the same issues caused by the pandemic. Um, from our discussion with industry, we've heard how managers are over overwhelmed and mentally exhausted. So this session will take you through some of the tools and techniques to support how, well, support you um, as, as we move to recovery um, and help you support your staff as well. Um, the final management webinar then is centered around the changing needs of customer service. Again, touched on earlier through Anya's presentation, but so much has changed in the past year and some of it will not go back to normal. Services have adapted to accommodate the lockdown um, and managers when they return will need to find that balance and engage with customers to work out what the new normal is and what service the customer is now expecting. Um, there'll be many changes and expectations remaining around cleanliness and social distancing. So this session will take a closer look at how those changing expectations and how you as a manager can identify these and respond to them. Um, I've got the link on the, the uh, presentation there to where you can sign up for these. Um, again, this will be circulated at the end of the session. So the next part. So the leadership and management qualification. Um, the colleges are all working together on the delivery of this qualification. So um, the qualifications have been designed to support managers in hospitality and tourism. The qualifications include um, will cover topics such as um, understanding leadership, uh, looking at emotional intelligence and its link to becoming an effective leader, uh, motivation and performance improvement, um, as well as communication and how that's an essential tool to become a leader. Um, so all of these will put in the context of the hospitality and tourism sector, and not just the relevance to the sector, but also to the individuals on the course. So we, we will be looking at who's on the course and where they're working and trying to make it as relevant as we can to uh, your work setting. The level three qualification supports um, practicing team managers um, and leaders who, who have to, you know, I suppose now more than ever, who are leading people through organizational change. Um, the courses are delivered online by each of the colleges across May and June. So you'll see from the table, it's maybe perhaps a little blurry there, but um, th there's different structures and setup. Um, so there's different delivery days. So we've tried to make it as varied as possible so that you can fit it in, at least so hopefully one of them will, will fit into your work schedule. Um, to achieve the qualification, there'll be a short assessment required at the end. So um, also, just to note, um, the funding is based on eligibility for skills focus, as pre previously discussed. So what I would encourage you to do is talk to your college representative um, on the on the screen in front of me, and they'll be able to give you more information on the course and confirm your eligibility for funding. The final part then of the hospitality and tourism recovery program is a technical um, skills series. So 
Um, we looked at the management series and that's very much about knowledge and developing skills and tools and techniques, but we felt that a practical element. So um, there's seven, seven practical technical series um, that will, that might not be for you as a manager. It may be that part of your team uh, would be interested in it, but these will run throughout May and June. So you have there, you've got, um, there, there's technology ones. So there's podcasting and looking at AR and VR. Um, there's looking at different cuts of meat. So there's um, poultry and then there's the cook it, um, cut it, quaff it one, which will look at lamb, I believe. And um, there's baking, chocolatier and cocktail making. So there is no um, criteria for that. So you know, you don't have to meet a certain eligibility and um, it's just there's places available on a first come first serve basis. So I would encourage you again to look at the website and, um, you know, get in touch with with um, each of the colleges here or who are holding them. And um, what I would like to do just before I end is I'm going to try and see if we can get that last video to work, the one that, that wasn't working at the beginning, just to see, because um, I think it's, it's worth watching. So just bear with me for one wee second and I'll try it one more time. Guapo Fresh Mix, again, is a Mexican food outlet. We do fresh food every day. Uh, we pride ourselves on our food being fresh and homemade. The business needed skills training, firstly as a result of my own lack of experience. This is the first time I've ever had a business, so there was lots of different elements of the business where I needed support and then also with the staff that I brought on board making sure that they were upskilled with terms of customer service and food hygiene and management training as well. Claire's barriers and frustrations in getting into business was coming up with recipes in terms of new product development, how to standardise those so that the product she could offer was the same every day. So the initial piece started around recipe standardisation. We also saw that there was a need in terms of skill set. So um, that was, was supported through Skills Focus and through a number of programmes. So it allowed the staff to upskill and allowed the whole business to advance. The Innovators programme was a vital programme in terms of getting me up and started with the business. It helped me to um, launch my product. It also helped me to have a greater understanding of the, the products and the menu specifications. The skills focus side of it with the staff has been tremendous. We have had customer service training conducted here within the premises for two days um, and that helped really just to refresh everybody and key in in terms of giving the best possible customer service. I've done a level two in customer care. I've done my level two food hygiene and I'm also done a ILM level five in management and leadership. I'm, I'm more confident in my work. I'm able to train new staff members, keep the customers happy and keep them coming back. That's the main thing. <laughs> the department has supported us which has been required. I'm only a small independent um, business and with I started off with a team of three. I now have a team of nine here in Derry and a team of four in Oma and to get them through training and to have the support and funding has really helped me to deliver training that without possibly I wouldn't be in a position to offer to the staff. Well, almost got it that time. <laughs> so, um, okay, well, just to round up. So, um, Skills Focus, brilliant program. There's there's huge potential across every organization. We would really encourage you to come in and talk to your local college. Um, we're not just limited by skills. The colleges are there. They have a wide breadth of programs. I, I focused in on the skills ones today, um, but we have um, a lot of innovation programs. We have, you know, there's come and talk to our students. We have student projects, student placements, as well as apprenticeships. Um, I would really encourage you to come in and talk to your local college um, and, and see what support's available. So I've put the um, contact details of each of the business development centers at each college on screen now, and I would encourage you to make a note of them and contact them. Um, but again, we'll circulate this afterwards for you. So thank you. I hope that's um, made some sense for you today and hope it's maybe given you some ideas about how you can upskill up -skill some staff within your business. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Rachel. I think the opportunity to see that video twice has got us all ready for lunch. And I see one comment uh, in the chat, which is from Jordan, who says he lives very close uh, to that fabulous restaurant. And he's giving us the, the, the thumbs up on that. That's uh, quicker than TripAdvisor. But Rachel, thank you so much for, for 
presenting today and giving an outline of all of the support that's available. One of the first things that Rachel said today was, what does this mean for my business? And on the screen now, you can see the names of people who can help their contact details. And I think it shows that with 40 main sites and 400 out centers, there are people there with expertise to help you grow and develop your business as you grow back better as both Russian and uh, on you talked about earlier on. I suppose Rachel talked about entry level IT, CPD. Uh, and one thing that that is possibly a benefit of the current situation that we're in is while Rachel pointed out that not every college has expertise in all of these subjects with Teams and Zoom, wherever we are across Northern Ireland, we can join in uh, the, the courses which are going on and listen to mentors and have a, a response to that. So we're going to move now to our question and answer. And we have a couple of uh, um, really good questions there in the in the chat. And, and Roisin, I wonder, would you go with this one first, please? Because I, I thought this was interesting. It comes in from um, uh, Margie McKay. And Margie talks about, I think, what is always the problem in business. It's about balancing, isn't it? Uh, it's about balancing the need to train staff and upskill staff with um, getting ready for, you know, for reopening. So, Roshan, what do you think? How do you think employers can balance the need to upskill and reskill uh, and the same time as getting ready for the reopening, which we hope is happening soon? Yeah, I think firstly, in terms of actually saying that um, the, the the focus on training in the first place for many businesses are looking at reopening as day one again, um, as if they were opening the business from the beginning. So in terms of staff, <clears throat> obviously across the sector, it's been slightly different perspective in terms of time people have been out of the business, some have come back in and come back out again. But um, for many, what we're hearing is that confidence of people have been knocked. So there is an importance to build in the refresher training. Um, and in terms of that balance, I think just picking up on um, Rachel's point just at the end, Rachel's point is it, it's important to engage and forge a relationship with your local college. Um, there's a lot of support that they can take and do um, in terms of helping to assess um, what your skills needs are, the programs that are there that are available. Um, I talk about having skinny qualifications and big fat qualifications, not all of the training. There's much more of an appetite for these short, sharp, um, bite-sized chunks of training. Um, and again, some of that is available either completely online um, I know there was a reference there as well to um, sort of customer service and maybe a plug for one of the ones that on you had mentioned as well. You know, there's a 60 minute um, World Host 2020 program that's available um, that is fully funded um, through Tourism NI. Um, so I would say make yourself aware of actually the supports that are available for that relationship with the local college um, and look then at the flexibility for um, say programs that can help to support that um, bite-sized learning. And importantly as well is that if there are issues or challenges or gaps in terms of where there's additional support needed, we're all learning through this, and I think Anya noted it as well. We need that communication and feedback, and if there's other supports that are required to be able to support the businesses, then we need to hear that. Yeah, yeah. thank you thank you very much indeed. Uh, Roshin, not only for your presentation, but for, for that answer as well. Anya, I mean, you uh, spoke very passionately about the, the need to support everyone working in the sector. You've been promoting the sector. Roshin's been doing that. You look at industry leaders, Somebody like Aileen Martin, sales director at Hastings, who's been traveling the world for years promoting the sector and promoting Northern Ireland. But none of us could have anticipated this. So in answer to the question on, on you, how do you think businesses can balance the, the needs and the expectations and the challenges at this very, very, very um, serious time for everyone? I think that um, I think that balance of communication with the, the consumer First and foremost, we need to make sure there's a business to come back to. Uh, and I think that um, I think the ears are open and the eyes are open. I think that everybody is just waiting for that uh, that green go uh, button. But we need to make sure that we are listening to their needs, to their concerns, their their, I suppose, the sensitivities that they have. And um, again, if you look at the research that we're providing in our insights um, online, you'll see that there's different groups of customer that have very, very different needs. But I think with that, then 
um, getting customers back in. I mean, I, I, I truly believe that um, hospitality is in the DNA of people in, in Northern Ireland. I think that we've all been born and bred in terms of, you know, fluff that pillow and do all. It, it's that side of, I think that we have invested so much already in our people, um, but we need to make sure we're not complacent and thinking that everybody's coming back. Confidence is one of the big things that we've seen that's coming through. A lot of people have, um, um, uh, you know, have, have been out of it for a while. So just rebuilding that confidence, the reassurance, the, the reminder of how well we've done as well as where we can go, but also being able to read, I think, again, back to that point of customers that, are, that you know, that are coming in. I think that this sector did an amazing job when it was able to open um, last summer. And I think a lot of um, experience should be drawn on that. I, I think, again, I think the, tip, the, the tips and the tools and the tactics are there because we've done it before. It hopefully means that we'll get back to it um, sooner. Um, but I would say, to, 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 to as, as Roshan has said, it is about starting from zero again. And we can't just think that because we're opening. And this is one of the big things that we have been advocating for with the government, which is to say, yes, we want reopening dates ASAP, but you also need to give us time to, to, to know when they're coming so that we can get our people prepared, we can get our businesses prepared, but also that we can get our customers prepared for knowing to, um, you know, what the operating environment is going to be like when they do get back out and are able to re-engage. So it's always that balance of, 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 of the three. It, it, that's a critical point, isn't it, really, Only It's about re-educating everyone. Uh, the way we go for that quiet drink or that quiet cup of coffee or that Sunday lunch is, is dramatically different, not just for yeah. the next month, but for, for the foreseeable future. A uh, lot of nice comment in the chat there. Carolyn McNeese is saying how much she's enjoyed the, the seminar and Margaret talking, uh, among others, about the great work which has been done by, by Guapo. I wonder, uh, Roisin and Anonyu, could you talk about, there's a question from Jordan about restand, restart grants. And would that be something that you would be able to direct people to more information on or further information on about financial support for employers? That particular one that Jordan has mentioned in terms of restart grant, it's not one that I'm familiar with. The one that I did note, obviously, is the, the job start scheme in terms of for recruitment. Um, Anya might be better across the, yeah. the, the grants piece than I am. Yeah, at, at the present moment in time, we don't have confirmation um, on grants, but I do know that it is being discussed um, um, across a range of different departments. Um, I, I know that um, there's um, uh, what's currently being looked at as to the existing grants that are there as to whether or not they can be adapted in the context of reopening and also um, uh, plugging, I suppose, the holes of, of not all sectors we know have been affected in the same way, nor will they be affected. Um, you know, some types of business, depending on their size and scale may be more heavily impacted um, at, than others. It is one that we ourselves are currently looking at and it'll be one of the things we'll be hoping to announce at that tourism conference I mentioned um, and the date um, will be mid-May so do, do, do keep your eye on that because there, there, there'll definitely be support coming from ourselves um, in that regard. Maybe not to the same level and extent as, as, as the schemes that have been planned there in, in, in England but hopefully that'll be picked up by other government departments and around. Well, thank you very much indeed for that, Anya. But Anya and, and um, Rushing and, and Rachel have been talking about and showing just how flexible the response from everyone is. And I would just echo Anya's words there about keep an eye out for the conference, but also keep a look out on a reliable news organisation and its search engine because things are changing, possibly not daily, but weekly. We'll keep a very, very close eye on that. Uh, Rachel, I don't think there are any other questions, but there would be just anything in conclusion that you would like to add just from the, the six colleges point in terms of what they can do. Yeah, just what, well, when you were chatting as well about, um, you know, flexibility as well, I'd be, I'd be keen, I think, reiterating what I said almost, but about talking to your local college. But when it comes to the likes of skills focus and setting up courses and programs, you know, we can provide um, flexible delivery. We can look to delivering, you know, a full week, you know, where it, the training's done very, very quickly, very condensed. We can look to evening sessions. We can look to day sessions. We can try and be as flexible as we can to try and help support businesses to upskill their staff. So um, I just think just take, keep that in mind. And then, as I say, come and talk to your local college and we'll try and make, make a solution that works for your business. And that's what this is about. It's about finding solutions and us working together and being innovative and looking forward so that we can, as Roshin and Anya and Rachel have said, build back better. Just one final observation that I had about Chew. I just thought listening to Max talking about food was like listening to poetry. What an enthusiastic young man. And uh, both Roshin and, and uh, Anya talked about that, you know, the critical importance of people, not only in, in front of house, but those preparing food. That guy loves what he does. 
and everyone in the sector does that and we're going to need everybody to work together to really make this uh, happen for us. Lots of uh, further events that you can uh, tune into. Contact details will be on the screen shortly. On behalf of the organisers, I want to thank everybody for joining in today. So many people uh, have worked to ensure that this is run smoothly. So we thank all of those. Uh, we're aware uh, and we thank uh, our contributors for taking time from really busy schedules at this particularly hectic time for sharing their thoughts and experience today to improve the communication. The marketing of Let's Do Hospitality and Tourism Recovery Programme, everyone at the six colleges, and I'd like to thank uh, Donna Convery and the whole team here at Belfast Met who facilitated this uh, event. And we thank you for joining us and hope that you'll uh, be involved in further events in the very near future. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks.